everyone and welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm Kelly Morgan with Kelsey and Kelsey, how you doing? Doing great. Yeah, and you know why we're doing great? Because we're at the Black Crow yes. Cafe in Elkhart. And as you can see this spread yeah. of food, oh my goodness, what a way to kind of start January, you know? Right, Into right. January yeah. with more food, more yeah. gas segments. That's yeah. the way to do it. And and you'll see this full segment mm -hmm. next, next week. week. So there's a teaser for you. Yeah, so but we have a great show for you guys. We do. Uh, we are headed to the South Bend Museum of Art where they have youth and adult classes, a whole bunch of mm -hmm. different kind. We're gonna actually uh, sit in on the clay class oh, and you'll find out about that. Oh, I wish I was there. I remember when I did that once. Yeah, you made yeah. a mess. I, I, I did, yeah. I know. I need that class. <laughs> right? I hope it is it still, <laughs> it I hope it's a date where I can make that yep. class. But then we're also going to go to Lang Lab, which is a place in our community that does so much. Yes, it and does. we're going to find out about um, some really cool things coming up. Yeah, Krista Bailey is gonna show us about that mm -hmm. And, uh, the different sustainability practices it has. Yes. Yeah, and then Rick, Rick is with his to... family at the zoo. At the zoo. Yeah, and okay. if you think that's a put down for Rick, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, we're not talking about <laughs> the animals. He, was, he really was with his family, but yep. we're also going to get to meet rhino the rhino the rhino yeah. that's exciting up close and personal up close so. and personal well yeah. while you guys watch that can we get a little up and close and yeah, personal with the food let's do that let's do that as always one of my favorite places in the entire world is the Potawatomi Zoo my buddy Josh here and of course hey okay. congratulations thank you're now you the, are you yeah. the zoo director I am the zoo director awesome yes, well, you know official. what <laughs> I, I, and, it's, and, it's, and it's overdue how's that I appreciate that I, I, uh, I love you brother and it's a dream come true I brought the kids with me of course you watch as I kind of grew up a little bit absolutely this is Samson I don't think you ever met Samson I don't think I have. So no, this is the first Josh. time. How you doing? Yeah. You Good. Fine. There you go. <laughs> and of course, we're standing out here. This is Musamba, the rhino, right? Yeah, this is one of the most exciting things for us. This is our new uh, southern white rhino, Musamba. He came to us uh, probably about three, four months ago. Wow. Um, so he, unfortunately, winter comes, so a lot of the public hasn't got to see him yet. Yes, but, yes. Um, but when we kick off in the spring, um, you'll be able to come see the rhino. So uh, this is Never Aaron. thought would have a rhino or something. <laughs> I can't believe it. Aaron's the keeper. Aaron, I, don't know, I, I know who you are, Aaron. Yep. There you go. So she's it's, been in yeah. here kind of cleaning, so we were just going to. If, if we want, um, we can have him come up. We'll try to scratch him a little bit. Yeah. We're going to need a bigger boat. Come up here. Yep, keep your hands between the bars, yeah. though. Yeah, just make sure. There you go. What's he feel like? You want to touch him? Yeah. You want to touch him? All right, come here. <laughs> Would you keep your hands right here. What's he feel like? What's that feel like? What is that? Like a dirty floor? <laughs> so we're really hoping, and when he's on uh, in his enclosure this year, um, you know, transparency and getting people up close to these animals is what it's really about. So yeah. we're going to actually offer an experience that people can come down and actually meet the rhino and be able to touch him just like this. So, so we're going to do rhino riding? Right. Well, not riding. <laughs> encounter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, this is great. Yeah. Of course, we've got uh, winter days come up, too. Yeah, we got winter days coming up. So uh, the next one is next weekend, I believe. We, have, we do two a month throughout the winter, yeah. and then yeah. our opening is in the beginning of April. Yeah, and so, you know what's going to be here before we know yeah, it. Yeah, so if you check out our website, all the way The zoo has changed so much is, since you've been here. You've had is, such a vision, and I know you've had a great team. Obviously, you've got great trainers. You've got uh, great folks, even in the office, and folks that are just wanting to help out as much as they possibly can. We really can. do. I keep saying, you know, we've gone from the small community zoo to a really a, a modern zoo that's yes. thinking about animal welfare, conservation, new enclosures. There's so much more to come in the next year, so it's really exciting. You brought a lot to the table, brother. I appreciate you it. Did. You really Thank have. You. Thank you. So let's go uh, walk around. Yeah, that's All it. Right. So when we were here, I think it might have been like the first or second time I met you. Better watch his hat. He's yeah, gonna, he'll, the bird's going to go Anything for creative, he'll, 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 but, he's but the cool. ostrich was. Remember, they were pecking us, but they were babies. Yeah, they, they were, were babies. Yeah. So when these guys came in, if you remember, they were just little guys Tiny, about yeah. this big. Yeah. So, so this is the big male here in his winter holding. Um, and this is always a, a nice place to be in the winter time. We call it our kind of our Noah's Ark because <laughs> it's, we have zebras, we have the horn. You can hear the hornbill in the background. Yeah. Uh, cranes, got the rhino. I mean, everything's in here in the winter time. Um, awesome. They all have access to the exhibit. So if you come on a winter day, you're going to see them out in the enclosures. Um, if it's a nice day, but they always have. Just come into the heat, so there he is, kind of looking at us. Are you going to peck me? He will. He'll grab your hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, He's going to yeah. grab your fingers. You can't do that with an ostrich. Watch. Here he goes. He's going to get Josh. Yeah, we'll oh, see. It. It's, yeah, yeah, you don't want that. It doesn't yet. feel good. No, it does not I feel good. I can hear that. You're going to be all right, man. We're going to get you a bed. We're going to get them all wrapped up. <laughs> Josh is showing you what not to do with the zoo today. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. That's well, we a big walk, bird. That's yeah, a big but if you bird. want, we can walk. Well, let's walk down here. I'll show you yeah. some of the other. Uh, maybe the zebras are in here. So how many ostriches are here now? So we have a pair of them. You do have the pair. OK. Um, looks like she she must be outside in the outdoor holding. Yep. She's enjoying the winter. Um, oh, but look, yeah, if you come right over here, it's kind of hard to see in there, but oh, it was one of the zebra. zebras. Oh, come here. I got to do this. I'll help you up. Samson, come here and stay right here for a second. 
I gotta do something with Sissy, okay? I gotta let her see this, because this is, her oh. favorite animal is what, Azariah? Horses. But what is that? Zebra. Oh yeah, the zebra. So and again, see, they get, their exhibit's even better now. Oh yeah, yeah, they have a little shade. Shot. And like right now, I mean, they, they're pretty hardy. They'll go outside in the tw and when it's 20 degrees. Um, but you can care. see, it's their, their choice fur right gets, now. Their fur gets a little bit thicker yeah, too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, Naturally. it does. Don't put your hand in there. Don't do that, that's what you don't do. You gotta <laughs> yeah. tell, see, Uncle Josh is gonna watch you guys this weekend <laughs> and bring you back over here and work. Yeah, you, you guys, guys see that, poop. see over there, you see the African crown crane? Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, so this is the learning center. So what is going on here? I know we talked about this before. You actually did something really cool with the program. You actually took the interspecies living quarters, right? Yep. And it, so, well, yeah, so what, this is one of my favorite places in the zoo because this is a place that we can have a lot of those little animals that you don't typically yeah. see out into the zoo. So we've got a little primates. These are golden lion tamarins. Um, and what we've done is we're trying to look at the ecosystem and what other animals come from that environment. Instead of just having tamarins, we've got the little goody right here. Yeah. So. I mean, this is, my, this is a large rodent from South America that would come from the same environment. They'd share the same ecosystem together. So What's this thing called? It's called an agouti. An agouti. Yeah. An I mean, they look like a capimari, right? Is yeah, so they're related to the cat. They're, they're a rodent. Okay. Um, a little bit smaller than a capy. Yeah. Um, they are cute, though. And then, you know, you look over here, you got more South American primates. Uh, we got the. Don't talking call monkeys. her that. Thanks, <laughs> 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 um, monkeys with some squirrel monkeys. Uh, but it's just a great opportunity. I mean, the kids can go right up to the glow. I mean, how close to, I mean, are you right now? Oh, I know. Look at him. He's just sitting can, there. You know, really look at it and, you know, see Well, you should try and live with these two things. <laughs> you should try that sometime. This is, yeah. yeah. I think the best part about the Learning Center is all year round, you can come in here. It's warm. The monkey, it you know, nice it's, it's, uh, it's definitely warmer in here. It's a great place for the uh, winter days, especially. So, you think, you think if I tap the glass, it's scarier? Mine. Just don't be, you know what, the, every time, the public always think they're the first ones to ever say, oh, look at that animal in there. Yeah, um, yeah. And no, everyone says Everyone it. says the same thing. <laughs> it's always, it, it doesn't get old. What kind of animal are you? It's the what joke kind of that never gets old. I know. Look, look at, look at it. Yeah. If I got in there and took my shirt off, people would try and feed me. And then I go to the zoo with my father and he says the same exact thing. I'm like, oh, dad, don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that. Ten years from now, you'll be saying, daddy, don't do that. Okay, so we're out here at the painted dogs, and some people know them as what, African dogs maybe? Yeah, African painted dogs. Um, but uh, the, the painted dogs kind of, kind of came around. Remember we were talking last time, uh, the wild dog, you know, had, had a stigma against it. These are an endangered species, and farmers yeah. were killing them because they were killing livestock. Sure. So they tried to soften their name by more going with a painted dog versus a wild right dog. Right now they're painting the grass. <laughs> exactly, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, would you go here? Yep, I went here. I'm going to go here too. When we was here last time, you only had two, though. Did they have a puppy, or what's yeah, going on no. here? Yeah, no, so that's what's pretty exciting. So we, this for the first time, we actually have a male now that just came in. And I think we were, we were talking a little bit about last time. We were a little nervous because, you know, integrating a male sure. with these two females, these aren't like your domesticated dogs. Right, they could end up turning on yeah, them, Yeah, right? they can. And in the wild, there's a hierarchy. So, you know, there was worry that maybe one of the females could even, um, you know, heaven forbid, even be killed by the male. Right. Um, so the process of introducing them was very, very, I mean, it was a process of letting them see each other through the fence, introducing them, and knock on wood, it's been amazing. The two are getting along. One of the females, it, what it really took was one of the females realizing that she was the less dominant. So she doesn't fight the other female. Right. And they have a whole hierarchy system, and it really worked out well so for So it's very everyone. much like Jack, Janet, and Chrissy. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's exactly. like three's company now. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Now exactly. we got to get Mr. Roper and yeah. the Furleys down here, right? Yeah, exactly. So we don't have a breeding recommendation right now to the zoo, uh, AZA populations, because there was about 51 of these guys born in the United States last wow. year in zoo. So, which is, uh, you know, it's a good testament to what zoos are doing, but sure. you also have to have homes for all those animals. So, yeah. you know, as much as we want to have puppies here, we got to gotta wait and make sure that, you know, all those can be placed into zoos and they're set up with the, yeah, with the, right, facilities. With the right facilities and everything before we do that. Man. But, but, but this is a great animal. And they, and they do okay with the, the cold weather. Yeah, it's probably, exactly. As you're watching this, it may be warmer. Who knows? We've had a really weird winter. It could be 50 degrees by the time somebody watches this, but I think it's about 26 today, maybe somewhere in there, 25, 26. And they're doing just fine out yeah, here. They have a heated there. barn, just like it, like you know, we have a heated house we go yeah. to. We can come outside. But today. I mean, they got a thick coat. Yeah, but for a winter day, if you come visit the zoo, I mean, this would be a perfect animal to be out running around yep. and um, enjoying. Now they're getting enjoying a little bit closer. Season. They don't know. He's, he's yeah, still, they're getting. Jack's <laughs> still trying to figure <laughs> us out. He's like, hey, is that Larry? Are we going down to the Regal Beagle or what's going on here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're a good-looking animal. They though. really they're are really pretty. So. Are they pretty? You like those guys, Samson? Yeah. You do? The zoo is always one of our favorite places, and they yes. have those winter days happening right now. So if you want to find out when the dates are, check out their website. And <laughs> uh, also, you have an opportunity to see some of the new things that are going on there. You know, the rhino is one of them. Mm -hmm. They've really com completely changed a lot of the fencing and other things to make it easier to see and be involved. 
And then if you haven't seen it, the brand new entrance building is absolutely oh, yes. spectacular. I've heard about uh, it. That's, that's finished now too. So it's just a, it continues to be a wonderful place getting better. It really is. I remember when I first moved here and I went there, it is amazing how much it's grown. Yep. Such a fun place. And I'm glad they're doing things during the winter. Yeah. Well, let's head on over to South Bend Museum of Art right. where they're doing the clay classes because I'm interested in it because like you said, I made a mess last time and I, I think I can do better this time. I think so. Yeah. Oh, thanks for believing in me. <laughs> Well, it's always great to get out and about, and especially when we can get downtown and get some culture in us and getting some artwork in us. And Kathy Dietz is here with us. And of course, Kathy, I got to say, I had no idea this existed. I'm even looking, if you can pan the camera real quick, there's a giant kiln back here. I feel like we're, we're kind of like snuck up on something, but yeah. Yeah, that's why we're here, yeah, right? So yeah. we're actually the river level of the Century Center right now. Okay. Uh, South Bend Museum of Art is located within the Century Center, which is downtown, right off the river. If anybody sure. uh, has been down there. We have offices and uh, we have galleries, but yeah, we have tons of classrooms. Yeah. This ceramic studio is one of the largest, if not the say, largest it's, it's in not, the area. I was gonna say, it's not just a classroom, it's like, right. ma it's right. like massive. Yeah. All the wheels here. We have um, we have classes here regularly, but you know IUSB uses this as okay. their studio for their students. Uh, so yeah, this is terrific. Today um, we have people working on the wheels, and we have people doing sculptural things. Yeah. But not only do we have ceramic studio, we have a dark room here, a photography studio. Oh, wow. Which how yeah. many of them exist anymore, right? Exactly. So we teach those type of classes. We have a jewelry studio where you do soldering, and you can make all kinds of cool things. Sure. We have instructors that do watercolor painting, uh, pastels. Uh, just we weaving. We have a weaving studio. Oh, yeah, I'm trying yeah. in my mind to think of all the rooms. Well, I'm just looking. But, it's like you know, yeah. how cool is that though to be able to come in, you know, build your own vase, build whatever you want to do. Right. You know, get this thing done from the time that you start kneading the clay out to getting it into the kiln, and then, then you got to do that. Then you got to glaze it, then put it back. I mean, right. So that's all done here. Right. I got to sign, all I gotta sign up for this. This will know, be fun. So if people want to take these classes, how do they get involved in doing this? So if you go to southbendart.org, okay. we have a, you hit the classes tab and that'll tell you uh, there's an adult section, there's a youth section. Sure. We have classes six, six years old through adult. Uh, most of the sessions are eight weeks, so it's once a week uh, that you come. And you so, can take them as often as you'd like yes, and we just please. go. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> So why is it important for the museum to do classes? Well, one of our missions is uh, to be, provide uh, programming for the community. You sure. know, we, this is a community institution. We have wonderful exhibitions, uh, but we, we want the community to have some hands-on uh, yeah. classes. Well, and a lot of schools have of, cut that budget, yeah, too. That's, that's the thing. Yeah, so this is like of, really important. Mm -hmm. yeah, we get a lot cool. of school tours through here. Yeah, that's awesome. really important. Well, is there anything else we can go over, or should we just kind of like check out what everybody's doing. I think you should check it out. Not you touch anything when the, yeah. when the wheel's going, right? Don't go there. What's that? <laughs> well, we've uh, stumbled across another Kathy, and this is Kathy. Can you say your last name for me? My name is Kathy Fodness. Fodness. Okay. I, I, well, see, I had a fondness for yeah. you already because <laughs> you're actually a teacher here. I am. And uh, I got to say, I walked over here, and I'm like, look at all the different color glazes. And the more I looked at it, I was like, I feel like I'm at a paint store trying to figure out what color I want to get. But this is kind of the different colors That's the they can do. the whole idea of this wall, actually. Yeah. This is every glaze that we have in our glaze room here, which we have a lot. And then it's with every glaze on top of it. And it's with four different types of clay that we offer here. We have everything from porcelain to a dark grog stoneware at so the top. So you get to see exactly can, what it's going to look like. You can see what it's going to look like, get an idea of what it'll look like on that particular clay body. There you go. If and you double them up. So how long have you been doing this? Well, I started pottery when I was in high school, and that was a while ago. Sure. And then I worked for my whole career, and then I started taking classes here at South Bend Museum of Art. Wow. And I was here for many years, and just naturally fell into teaching a class, and it's been five or six years that I've been teaching a class just here. Just natural, ready to go, right? You know, if you do it enough, I've made thousands of pots with these hands, um, you know, sure. you, you get better at it. <laughs> Every single you time, do. right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so if folks want to do this and they want to come in and they say they've never done it before, explain a little bit about the process. Like, well, start we kind of going. meet people where they are. Everybody starts here because they like clay mm -hmm. and, and they've always been interested in pottery, whether it's you know hand building, sculpting, or getting on the wheel. Usually the wheel is our hook here. People are just mesmerized by the wheel, as I was. Is it because of the artwork or is it because of the spinning? 
Yeah. <laughs> it <hypnotizes> you. <laughs> no, I just think that, you know, everybody looks at it and they think, oh, how hard can that be? Oh, I yeah. want to do it. Oh, yeah. And so uh, they take a class here and they find out exactly how hard it is. Sure, sure. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing is we're here to, to meet them wherever they are with the process. If, if they're interested in, you know, hand building or, or the wheel throwing. But, um, you know, there's something for everybody here. Uh, people start off and you know my main goal in teaching is for somebody not to be frustrated in doing it so right. you know I'm here to help you at the beginning and to, to get you you know through centering clay on the wheel and um, you know pulling it up and and shaping it I'm, I'm here to I, well, I kind of think of myself as a coach because, so they're in good hands is what I'm saying well you know there are a million variables to this that, that you can do with it and so um, since I've had so much experience, we can pretty much figure out what they need to do at that time. And we know why this is important now, because this is actually hands-on, this is actually it a is. learning experience, and I, it's very therapeutic. Oh, it's more than thera therapeutic. You know, the thing with the museum here is that, you know, I started because I loved doing pottery in high school, mm -hmm. and it was something I was familiar with, and I knew that I would fall back into it. And so I started for the clay, but what I've stayed for is so much more than that. It's such a wonderful community here, yeah. and um, yeah. you know, the people, you know, it, they have a real bond that forms, and we're here for so much more than clay. When now. I walked in there, I thought it was like, they said it was like family here, I actually thought it was a family. Well, That's what I thought, I thought there was like a whole family here. You so. know. When I started taking a class here, we had an instructor, and she, that's exactly how she made me feel. Like and I, I decided when I started teaching that I was going to try to give everybody that same feeling when they walked in the door here. Awesome. And you know, I've taken it as a personal challenge throughout the years here, and you know, here you are, and you're here still doing I am. it. And, and you've got like 30 people out here just there's going. There's a lot of people it. in this class. Excellent. Well, you know, I. I, you know, I can't help but have a good feeling over that. They're here at taking my class and having fun. Do you guys see this? This is why you need to come take this class. Look at the joy. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. I appreciate it. How much fun. That yeah. looks like a lot of fun. And the cool thing is that there's always classes going on, actually, all year round. Right. And for more information on that, you can go right on to experiencemichiana.org. Yep. yep. Cool classes. Very that one, cool. That one was packed, so it was really fun to see them interact. Yeah. Uh, next, Thank God they didn't let Rick do anything. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, next we're headed over to Lang Lab, which is a really cool place in our yes, community. It is. It's taken an old building, repurposed it, and Krista Bailey is going to kind of talk with some of the owners about how that happened and kind of their business practices, how it's a sustainable resource for our community. Okay, cool. Hi, I'm Krista Bailey with the Center for a Sustainable Future at IU South Bend, here with a moment to experience sustainable Michiana. And that means it's uh, something that's going on in our area that is a nice balanced approach to environmental concerns, social, and also economic. So today, we're at the very glamorous looking Lang Lab uh, in uh, South Bend on the southeast side of town. There is a lot going on here. You wouldn't know it from the outside. You might drive by it and not even think a thing because it's an old warehouse. Uh, but once we step in, you'll see that there's a world of activity happening to build a more sustainable Michiana. So let's take a look. And here's the guy I want to talk to. Hey, Rami. Hello. We're at the bar. Hello, hello. Not drinking here Not during drinking. the daytime, uh, but a great feature here. So Rami, tell me, we were, we were just outside and no offense, but it, it doesn't look great out there. I mean, it's an older building, it's, it's brick. Um, I've had many people tell me they, they drive right by, they don't realize what it is. Sure. Why put this kind of space in this kind of space? That's a good question. <laughs> we, get, we, get, we get asked that a lot of times. We really were doing very much what we were doing at Lang Lab in our house. Uh, or rather houses, all the people in the community that was involved in Lang Lab. We'd have dinner parties, we'd have like rock shows in the basement, we'd have gatherings and whatnot. And then in 2007, 2008, the idea was, can we make this a state? Can we actually make this in a way that we, no one person is hosting the parties all the time? And maybe turn some little profit, something to keep it going, you know? Um, so a collective, collaborative party yeah, of sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> okay. to my knowledge, I'm not, I'm not really, well, now I'm a local boy, but I, I wasn't born and raised here. 
but to my understanding there was buildings like Langland before Langland. So in a way when you look at it like on like a, a longer, a temporal uh, um, sort of journey, we're one of many uh, manifestations of like this artistic uh, vibe that was always in South Bend. Yeah. And, sure. and I think the meltdown, economic meltdown helped us tremendously because nobody was buying buildings and we were fortunate to pick it up at the relatively cheap, uh, doable price. So it was an point. affordable space to find and something that otherwise might not get used. So a great repurposing yeah. of a very functional facility right here in yeah. town. What all does happen here? I want to show people all the, the we, neat, sustainable we, things we, here. We are happy to, to host and promote pretty much anything. So, <laughs> so long as uh, uh, it is promotable, so long as it has sub su substance. Uh, if you look at it like our repertoire, we've had from uh, literally burlesque shows, the Brick House burlesque, mm -hmm. to church services, and everything in between, like literally opera, uh, uh, noise uh, uh, performances, uh, business seminars, weddings, uh, like literally you name it, we've had, we've had pretty much everything. So. And so we're here sort of in between spaces, yeah. so there's like a, a larger event space, but then over here is a gallery, mm -hmm. and then some entrepreneurship sort of stuff happening yes. at, at either end. Yes. So um, can we take a quick Absolutely. look and, and see Certainly. what there is to see? Happy awesome. to show you, yeah. All right, hey Nathan. Hi. So we just came from the gallery, which was incredible. I haven't seen that show yet, so that was really neat. But I know there's a lot of stuff that's happened here. I mean, I've been to receptions and parties and performances, and I gave a talk here. Um, but I know that's just scratching the surface. So what other things happen in this multi-purpose space? Uh, we've had everything from opera to business conferences. Conferences, um, really? Uh, cool. I think our first, our first um, kind of use for the gallery space was uh, was a business conference with uh, Small Business Development Corporation. Interesting. Um, so you can come here and be very serious and, and learning things. You yeah. can also come here and, I'm assuming, get kind of goofy and have fun. We've had dance parties. Um, oh. We've had uh, Latin dance. We've had, uh, you know music shows, we've had uh, all sorts of uh, things. Um. So this is a large chunk of the building here, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the whole heart of Lang Lab, at least that's how I sort of think of it, but it's a lot of space to give up, as it were, to the community to do whatever it wants. Mm -hmm. Why is that the kind of the heart here? I think that's where we are. I mean, like what we try to do as uh, as a space is to um, facilitate the community as much as possible. There's been very little we've rejected as far as um, you know people coming in um, and asking for space. Um, we all we'll always try something at least once. You know, um, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. But um, we're pretty open to just about anything happening here. So the heart is sort of that possibility of bringing community together. Possibility is that. the main goal, like what can we do with it? And then out of that springs community, I think. And when you say we, it's not just y'all who own it, but. It's, you know, there are people, this, there are people that are invested, the people who are, um, who have been here before, um, that have that invested their time and businesses into helping to create the space have those have moved out into the community that have been incubated here um, the businesses that are here now um, the artists that are here now have investment in the space and so um, we try to facilitate that and create um, a space for them as much as us Hey, Hello. Stephanie. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Great. We are showing off some of the sustainable features here. But this space has evolved so much over the last 10 years. Um, I'm very familiar with many corners of this building, but um, could you tell me a little bit about the idea behind this business entrepreneurship model? Um, sure. Why here, how that works for, for Lang Lab and the businesses? I think when you look around in South Bend, there are so many different people who um, have the ability to serve the community with um, things like 
being creative with coffee, being creative with chocolate, being creative with bread, being, you know, creative with pottery, all these other things that um, lend themselves to businesses. For me, there's not so much of a distinction between, you know, having a concert and having, a, you know, a renter or a business because they're all in here participating together as part of the community and they're all weaving together to create this fabric of um, people, individuals that um, support the process of making South Bend a better place to live. So, so in some ways you're creating sort of this trial size space for mm -hmm. businesses. Test it out, start to grow or not, although I think everything's been pretty successful that's come through. Um, <laughs> well, and get an establishment, right, to, to yeah. see, what, is that really what I want to do? Is it going to work for the community? Um, and what a wonderful model to say, mm -hmm. pay rent when you can, how you can. <laughs> we want you to succeed because we know that makes Lang Lab better and right. makes the community better. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. So definitely we are able to stress test and we have had some <laughs> um, very, very big wins and some misses as well. Um, sure. And that's fine. I think that's part of um, a failure is also a lesson, right? And so uh, about what works in this community and what doesn't work in the community. and. Um, we're, we're an individual community. South Bend is its own city, its own community. We're not like anybody else. We don't have the same people. We don't have the same resources. Other cities have more, other cities have less. But what we really have here is unique and special and we should you know, see what works here and, and grow what works here and, and uh, what works best for us. So. Well, thank you all so much for investing in South Bend in this way, to invest in our local economy, to building up the environment, but of course the important piece is building that community that keeps it all together, our own unique community. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank yeah. you, Lang Lab. Thank you so much, Krista, for mm -hmm. showing us around Lang Lab, and it's great to see that people are interested enough in our community yes. to have a resource like that and help other businesses grow uh, and provide things like music and whatnot to our community. Well, we do have a great community. We do. And you know what? One of the things that we said we're going to do is get out to the places right. that we've never been. So right. guys, please let us know what you're out there experiencing. and. Give us some hints on some places that we can go. Just hit us up on Facebook and you know what else we can do. If you're in that area when we come out, we'd love for you to join us. That'd be kind of fun. Yep, we'll start letting you know where we're going to be yeah. so that maybe you can hook up with us, especially if you let us know where you think we should visit. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, well, are you ready to finish up this fabulous food here? Yeah, which is a reminder, next week, next week. we're here at the Black Crow Cafe mm -hmm. in Elkhart, uh, which is a vegan restaurant and uh, still some wonderful food. Absolutely wonderful. Well, let's get to this food. Okay. All right. We'll see All right. you next week. Yeah, guys, thanks for joining us. I'm going to have some. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.